as you open the tomb and grace Jesus to new life. So open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today, and in confidence go forth to live what you show us. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. shepherds. I come from a country with almost as many sheep as people. As you drive along the roads and you look at the hills, you see all these little dots, all these little white dots all over them. In springtime, the fields near the farms are filled with sheep. And the two bouncy lambs. In the years I've been in Canada, I've realized that you don't see too many fields or hills with sheep as you drive on the country roads. In fact, you don't see too many hills, at least not in this part of the world. Shepherding. It's a lonely life. It's a hard life. Imagine those hills, those rugged hills of Scotland. Imagine the shepherd walking those hills. Rain, hail, snow, storm, wind, sunshine. Walking, hearing for the sheep, watching for lambing season, long hours, the job of shepherding. Once lambing season is over, the sheep are then return to pasture on rugged hills, hills that can be used for crops or, or for cattle, but it's just perfect for sheep. Just the best place for them to be. At the foot of these vast hills, sometimes you see a little cottage, small, set back from the road, nestled in the valley. This is a shepherd's cottage. And as you drive through, you take your time and look, you can see the sheep folds, circular stone walls to give the sheep protection from wolves, foxes, and other predators. A place that the shepherd guide his sheep to in the evening for safety. Sheep are very important to the economy in Scotland. They're used for the wool as much as the meat. In Judea, they were used for the wool, but as well they were used for the milk. So sheep will feed, feed and clothe community. And in Judea they were kept for years and years. And the shepherd grew attached to them. And they to him. He would know each one of them by name. He would recognize their unique and individual personalities, the ones who were perhaps quiet or shy, the ones who were a bit more exuberant and danced around, and then the ones who were always, always getting themselves into all sorts of scrapes and trouble. The 
shepherd knew them all. And they knew him. They would recognize his voice amongst others. Each morning they would leave the fold to go in search of fresh, moist, succulent grass to eat, to find fresh, clear water. Perhaps when they got to the watering hole, there would be other shepherds from other villages with their flocks of sheep. And the sheep would drink and run and play, and the shepherds would watch and eat their fruit and share with one another the, the news from their own villages and communities. Then it would be time to leave. And the shepherds would rise and take up their crook and staff, and they would go their own way, calling their sheep. Miraculously, the sheep would separate from the multitude of folds and follow their own shepherd who went on ahead of them. Miss Shepherd, the Judean shepherd, had no dog to herd his sheep, as they do in Scotland. He used his voice, calling each one by name. At night, when they reached the fold, he would count them all as they went in, and he knew each one intimately and loved them all, knowing their personalities, caring for each one. And then he would lay himself down across the entrance to give them protection for the night. One college. Our Bible is full of references to shepherds. King, da King David began his career as a lowly shepherd. Remember King David, the small boy? And then, of course, the 23rd Psalm. Favorite. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In Psalm 79, we, thy flock of the pasture, give thanks to thee forever. Psalm 80. He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. In Isaiah, he will be shepherding the flock of the Lord faithfully and righteously, and will suffer none of them to stumble in their pastures. He will lead them. The theme of shepherd is carried forward from the Old Testament to the New, where Jesus is described as the good shepherd, the best, the one and the true shepherd, the one who will risk his life to seek out and to save the lost sheep. The shepherd guides, cares for the sheep, leads them to fresh grazing pastures and places where there is fresh water. He protects them and searches them out when they are lost. Our scriptures, our Bible, is a collection of stories from creation to end times. It is a story of God seeking out right relationship with creation. It is a story about a God who wants to welcome and care for all, all people, all of creation. In fact, you could say that the Bible is as much a story about humanity searching for God as it is about God 
searching for us, for me and for you, crying out our names to follow, to enter into the fold of God's heart. The Bible has warnings in it as well. To be careful that we don't follow the wrong shepherd, be led astray, away from our sheepfold, which is our home in God. And for us as Christians, the way into the sheepfold is through Jesus the gate. Jesus is shepherd, door and pasture. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the water of life. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And in him, we can find life, and life abundant. The watchman opens the gate, and the shepherd calls his sheep by name. He brings them out to go in search of food and water. And the sheep follow, because they recognize his voice. They know him. They trust him. The shepherd has built up a relationship with the sheep. And they know that he will care for them, and he will be with them. Not following behind at a slow walk, but leading with courage and gentleness. Walking before them, guiding them. The shepherd of Judea was a simple, strong man who carried little with him. He would carry his food in an animal skin. He would have a sling like the one that David used against Goliath to protect his sheep and to stop them from wandering away and to protect them. The shepherd would constantly be watching over his eyes straight into the furthest, furthest resources of where his flock might be, watching to make sure that they didn't wander too far. And if they went too far, he would take his sling and send a small pebble just in front of them, just to remind them, come back, come back. He carried a rod and a staff. By rod and by staff they comfort me. Staff was a short wooden club with nails at the end. Not the most comforting of images, but it was used to protect the sheep from thieves, robbers, and wild animals. And his rod was like a shepherd's crook that he would use to catch the sheep around the neck and guide it back. The sheep are comforted by the shepherd's presence. They know they are being looked after. They see the shepherd going before them, guiding them to green pastures. <coughs> Sometimes a sheep would wander away a place where they would get caught in a thicket of brambles and thorns. Can you imagine a sheep caught in a strong thicket of brambles and thorns, caught in its woolly coat, struggling? Can you imagine its pitiful bleats and bars? as it cries out to the shepherd, come and rescue me. Come and find me. Can you imagine that finally exhausted, the sheep gives up? There is no more struggle. There is no more voice. <coughs> it just sits and rambles and thinks, <coughs> this is it. The sheep gives up. 
who knows us, who cares for each one of us, knows our names and calls, guiding us into the fold of God's love. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd walks with us and before us in difficult times. The good shepherd reminds us that we can rest in God's warmth and love. The good shepherd calls us to be in God's heart. In a place of deep knowing, of deep peace and of incredible love. God is in love with you and you and you and you and you, all of you. God is in love with each and every one. God is in love with you. And we are enfolded in the center of God's love. The Good Shepherd is always present. One day, one day, I shall live in the house of the Lord.